Welcome back to this tutorial series on genetic algorithms. Right, we're ready to create our DNA. So if you go into the scripts folder in your project, you'll find that there's a script called DNA. Open that up. Now there's nothing in there basically. So this is where we're going to write all the code. Now, in order to figure out the structure of this DNA, we have to consider what we want Zombunny to do. What we're doing with him is to get him to explore the maze as much as possible and pick up as many Easter eggs as possible that are hidden in there. Now, we're not actually going to use the Easter egg as such in the DNA, okay? What we're interested in is getting Zombunny to move freely around that maze and explore as much as it as possible that it can get hold of and not get stuck into any corners. So we're going to start very simply and say that Zombunny, we want Zombunny to know what to do when there's a block right in front of him. And we want him to know what to do when there's not a block right in front of him. But he's got to learn that. Okay, we know obviously what he has to do. He has to, he has to turn if there's a block in front of him and he can keep going straight ahead if there's not a block in front of him. But that's what this is going to learn. So first of all, we need to create a gene sequence which is going to have two values in it. So it's going to be a length of two. One, as I said, for when there's something in front of him and one when there isn't something in front of him. So we're going to create this in a dictionary, which might seem a bit of an overkill at the moment, but it'll make your program more extensible. So dictionary and the first value in there will be a bool. So it'll be true if there's a block in front, false if there's not a block in front. And then we're going to have a float value assigned to that will be the direction to turn if there is something or not something. Okay, so let's call this genes. And then we want in here int DNA length that we'll calculate because we need to use it for swapping those individual gene values a little later. Okay, so let's create a constructor, public DNA, and we'll put genes equals new dictionary like that and then we're going to run a set random to fill up that dictionary with random values because this is where our genetic algorithm starts all of the agents get random genes and then they are allowed to perform in the environment based on how they go the best ones are kept and their genes are then bred together and the others are kind of I guess tossed aside because they're no good. So inside of our set random, let's create that. So public void set random. We want to add into the dictionary a set of all the possible states that Zombunny is going to come into contact with, which at the moment is whether or not there's a block in front of him. So there's only going to be two. We want genes.clear initially in here because we will come back and call this a little bit later and reset the genes. So genes.add and the first one will be false. So if there's not a wall in front of Zombunny, what do we want Zombunny to do? Well, it's not what we want to do. It's just what we're going to randomly set him up to think he's going to do. So I'm going to put random.range and we're going to put an angle in here between negative 90 and 91. Okay, 91 because this is exclusive of that value and we're going to stick with whole numbers in this case. So this is going to return an integer. We don't want the like minuscule floating angle ranges. This angle is the angle that he's going to turn when there's not a wall in front of him. Okay, if he turns up with by pure chance a zero, then he's in luck, isn't he? Now we also want to grab this again and add in another one just here and we've got a semicolon up on that clear this will be when there is a block in front of him okay it's going to be true then this will be what the gene is set to then finally we'll put dna length equals genes dot count okay so there are uh, two values in our gene sequence now, the other thing that our DNA needs to be able to do is combine itself with another 
piece of DNA. So we'll put this code underneath set random. So public void combine and we'll pass through two sets of DNA, D1 and DNA D2. Then inside of here, first of all, we'll create an int i equals zero to keep track of each gene essentially and then we'll create a temporary holding spot for these genes so we'll create a dictionary which is the same as the dictionary we've already got okay so it's going to be a bool and a float value and we'll call this new genes and set that to equal a new dictionary of that particular type okay then we're going to do a for each and loop through the genes that we've got in this particular uh, sequence of DNA and then reset them with these two pieces of DNA coming through which will eventually be the parents. Okay so we'll put a key value pair in here which will be a bool and a float like that and then we want G in genes and we're going to take half of one parent and half of the other parent so if i is less than dna length divided by two then we'll use the first parent and up here we'll go new genes dot add g dot key d1 dot genes g.key. Okay, so we use the same state that's in the genes and the same state that's in the parent in order to set that value there. And then we're going to go an else for the other parent and we want the same line pretty much, but it will be from D2. Okay, now each time we're going to update I, so I++. Plus plus, and then after we've done all that, we're going to set genes to equal new genes. Okay, right, so that is combining the genes. Finally, we're going to create one more method that will allow us to query the genes so that we can figure out which way Zombunny should turn based on a certain state of the world. So public float get gene. We're going to send through a bool value, which will be our um, front whatever's in front and then we want to return genes at front from our dictionary so that'll be the angle that's getting returned based on whether this is true or false right so we're going to save that and leave this video here that is all you need for your dna when we come back in the next video we will create Zombunny's brain and start using the values in this DNA. If you'd like to support our work, like us on YouTube, visit our website holistic3d.com, look for our courses on holistic3dlearn.com or support us on Patreon.